Hello everyone. I welcome you all to the channel Statistica Hub. So as you can see the thumbnail or the topic that it says that we are going to discuss few problems from the IIT Jam 2023. So I will try to solve like five problems this day and then we can discover up all the 60 problems in the coming days. Okay, so let's start with solving like problem number one. Let's have a look on the problem number one. So, okay, so let's have a reading on this thing. Like, okay, we are given some X random variable that is some continuous random variable, fine. Then it says that the probability that X is a positive number, that means it's a non-negative, like zero is a possible number. So it says that probability that X is greater than or equal to zero. This probability is coming out to be zero. So first thing that I can see from in here is like, okay, that this X random variable, this is non negative. That's like my first observation that I can see. And it says that, okay, variance of X exists. That means to say like expectation of X square and expectation of X, both the things exist. Okay. Then we are supposed to find the expectation of X square. So, well, I think like there is some remark in FMS most probably. And the remark says that, okay, if you have this kind of condition, then we can try find this expectation. So the expectation of X square, that is nothing. That is given by integration from zero to infinity. 2x1 minus fx dx. Okay, so I think that will be the answer. So what is this thing? Can you have a look on this thing? So basically this probability means to see you are finding probability that x is less than or equal to some particular value x. Okay, and it is a continuous that means to say equality and inequality. That doesn't make much difference. Like the point probability will be zero again in this sense. Okay, so we have this situation that okay, the probability that x less than or equal to this thing that is written over here. So basically this probability, this complete probability, that is nothing. That is probability x greater than or equal to some x. Okay, so inequality or equality, that doesn't make any difference. Again, I'm saying the same thing. So we are getting, I guess, the option A. So option A is correct. Okay, so the problem was like straightforward. We are given some result in the FMS and like if you go to some standard books, then you can find these kind of results. Okay, not uh, much about thinking or something. And if someone is unable to remember this remark, then we can go for some standard format, like general format. How can we solve this thing? So if I write expectation of X squared, so that thing is nothing. Like we know we can use the CDF, CDF of any function, and I can write the expectation and all. So if I go for this formula, then that will be nothing. That will be from zero to infinity. Okay. And we have the basic integration like one minus f of x square. I'm not writing the CDF for x, I'm writing the CDF for x square. So that is one minus f of x square and at what value? So assume that we are going for some t. Okay. And we are making under integration dt. Okay, we have this situation. So if I go for solving this thing, so like I know a few things about this kind of distribution. So again, the same formula, like this complete thing will be something like this. So I can write this as integration from zero to infinity. And we can write this thing as probability that my x square greater than some t. dt. That's all that I can see. So from here, I can see that, okay, we have something x square. So if you make a plot for y equal to x square, then the plot will be looking like this thing. Then it says that x square is greater than some value t. So I can see if this is my particular value t. That means to say this x must be greater than t root t or x must be less than minus root t. So I can just make this in this format that, okay, this will be nothing. Integration from zero to infinity. The first portion, this one. So that says probability that my x is greater than root t. And I can make dt. Okay, and the second portion will be integration from say, we have integration in the same format from minus in, uh, zero to infinity. Probability that my x is less than minus under root t. Okay, dt. Now I can see like t will be some positive number, then I can see like x less than minus t. So technically this complete thing means to say x is negative. Okay, but x negative is not possible in this scenario. So this probability will be coming out to be zero. So we are left with only this portion. Okay, so I can just take it out. So that will be coming out to be integration from zero to infinity. Probability that X is greater than under root T dt. Okay, now we will go for some basic transformation. So I know my T is nothing, that is X square. So I know dt will be two X dt. Now I can just plug in all the values. Then you'll be finding things like that will be nothing. Integration of zero to infinity, two X probability, X is greater than some value X dx. So again, you are getting the same answer. So the option A, that is correct. I hope you are able to understand what I did in this particular problem. Okay, so you can just remember few results and if you are unable to remember the results, then also like these problems are like for one mark. So that means to say they are not dealing with a lot of concept. Okay, so I'm going to the problem number two, but before that I need to change the color of the pen because I'm not liking the color. Okay, so I'll make red. Maybe. Okay. 
okay that's my personal choice so i hope that doesn't make any sense to anyone <laughs> although okay let's have a look on problem number two so the problem number two is something like okay we are given some x it says that x is following some okay so my x is following some f distribution with parameter 6 comma 2 and the y says it is following some f distribution with parameter 2 comma 6 so before going to anything else i can see that okay this thing is having some sort of relationship so i can just make something like okay 1 by y or 1 by x then y, 1 by y will be following some f distribution that will be having say 6 comma 2 and this will be having some f distribution with parameter 2 comma 6 that means to say like i can replace them in some format so i can see like 1 by y is nothing that is x okay so if i make the use of this thing then this statement says that probability that my x is less than equal to 2 that is given to 216 divided by 343 okay now we need to find this alpha so that i can multiply this thing so if i go for this thing then i can just make some conclusion or make the we have to write probability that y is less than equal to 1 by 2. Okay. So if I make 1 by y. Okay. What I am saying? If I make y to the 1 by y. That means to say if I say probability. Sorry. 1 by y. That is greater than equal to some 2. Okay. I just make reciprocal. Okay. Now I know 1 by y is nothing. 1 by y will be following some x distribution that is given to us. So that is nothing. That is f 6 comma 2. Okay. Then we are given some f probability. So I can just replace probability that x is greater than or equal to 2. And we are given this probability. So this probability will be nothing. That will be 1 minus 216 divided by 343. Okay. So if I go for the basic calculation. So that will be 343 uh, minus 216 divided by 343. For that I need the calculator. I don't have the calculator. So I will just use the phone. 343 minus 216 that will be 127 127 divided by 343 okay that is the thing the alpha that is required so this is nothing that is alpha and we need to find 686 into alpha so that will be 686 into 127 divided by 343 okay so i make this multiplied by 68 now don't judge me according to my calculations okay so divided by 343. Three. So I think I'm getting the option A, 254. Okay, so I'm getting again the option A. So that was problem number two. So we need to, again, some basic concept and no like hard and fast rules, just some basic concept that, okay, if I just make the reciprocal of any F distribution, then the degree of freedom will be just interchanged. Okay, so that's the rule. Okay, then have a look on the third problem. Okay, so we are given the third problem that says like, okay, we are having some x1, x2 and x3. They are some random sample from the normal distribution with parameter theta comma y. Fine. So what is given to us that, okay, we have some population x that is following some normal theta comma y. That's the thing that we know. Okay, and theta belonging to real line. Okay. And it's some unknown parameter. That means to say we don't know the parameter. Then which of the following conditional expectations does not depend on theta. Okay. Okay, so like this problem is something that has already been in the past year papers, I feel so. Maybe in 2018, you can find a problem just like this one. So that means to say like, <laughs> if I remember something, if I recall something, that means to say like there is some relation or there is something that I know beforehand. So I'll just make use of that thing. So if I just ignore all these options, I'll just go to the final option that says expectation of x1 plus x2 minus x3, given that x1 plus x2 plus x3. That's the thing that we are supposed to do in this situation. So if I go for like, okay, I can just make like they are independent. So I can the expectation of X1 given, and that is not divided. That is given X1 plus X2 plus X3. That's the first thing that I can write. Okay. Then I go for expectation of X2 given, given X1 plus X2 plus X3. That is the thing. And the final term minus expectation of X2. 3 given x1 plus x2 plus x3. That's the thing that I can make use. So I know they are IID. So basically this expectation, this expectation, this expectation, all the expectation will be equal. So I can just cancel out these two expectations. So I'm left with only this expectation. So that is expectation of x1 given x1 plus x2 plus x3. That's the thing. Now I can just make the use of like, this is some normal distribution, I guess. 
yeah yeah that is a normal distribution so xi's are belonging some normal distribution with some theta comma one so if i make some estimator for the theta then basically this x bar will be nothing that is an estimator for theta okay so i can just say like we have something like summation xi divided by n basically that will be an estimator of theta so if i make the condition for sufficient estimate then you can see like x1 plus x2 plus x3 that is a sufficient estimator or i can just say that in this situation that will be the minimal sufficient estimate okay then if i make the use of that thing that means to say like this thing if i know this thing that means to say i don't require the knowledge of theta that's the condition for like sufficient estimator how do we define sufficient estimator so like if we know the sufficient estimator that means to say like we can replace the theta by that sufficient estimator that's the basic definition of sufficient estimator so i feel like this thing that you are going to calculate that will be independent of theta so i think option d will be correct okay so if anyone anyone found any error in all the calculations or any solution please let me know like i will drop my email id after the videos like in the description box so you can just email me like any problem that you feel like then i will just rectify it so that is a possible case that i might end up in all the problems solved incorrect okay though i will try not to be incorrect <laughs> but that is a possible case okay okay so that is problem number four that i can see okay we have some m that is some matrix that is given to us like one minus one zero minus one two minus one and one minus one, sorry zero minus one one uh, okay so this is some sort of symmetric distribution uh, symmetric matrix so technically i'm not that much touching mathematics apart from my regular course so I may end up in saying some statistical terms in between the mathematics part also, but I will try to correct that one. Okay, so let's have a look on this thing. So we are given some matrix, say M is the matrix, and that is looking like this one, and I can see like this is a symmetric matrix. Okay, and if you know zero vector this, okay, that is given, that satisfies this condition. Okay, so we are given few conditions that, okay, you have some matrix M, you have some vector X, and this vector is non-negative, okay. And we have the condition that says m raised to the power 6 x equal to x. Okay, so if I go for solving this thing, then I can just make use of the eigenvector or eigenvalues, most probably. I need to make the subspace such that that contain the vector. So if I go for the basic thing that, okay, I can see like in this situation, okay, let's start finding the eigenvectors or eigenvalues. So if I go for like 1 minus lambda, minus 1, 0 and minus one, zero, and two minus lambda, and we are having minus one, and we are having minus one, and one minus lambda. Okay, so you can see like if I replace lambda equal to one, then you will be getting a determinant that is coming out to be zero. Okay, so that means to say lambda equal to one is an eigenvalue. We are having one eigenvalue. So that means to say you can just replace m into x that equal to x. Okay, it will again be the eigenvalue of this one also. Like if one is an eigenvalue, of m then it will be the eigenvalue of m raised to the power 6 also so i can just replace in this sense so now i can just solve it like some basic calculus or basic algebra thing so that will be coming out to be like we are having the matrix say 1 minus 1 0 we are having minus 1 2 minus 1 we are having 0 minus 1 and 1 i will just multiply it by x that is given to us so i can just make x my g that will be equal to x y and g so if I just make the multiplication, that will be coming out to be x minus y that equal to some x. So this gives me y equal to 0. If I go to the second line, then minus x plus 2y minus g, that will be equal to my y. So I can see from this situation, I'm getting minus x minus g that equal to some minus y. Okay, so x plus g that equal to y. So I can see like from this situation, if I use the y equal to 0, that means to say x plus g equal to 0. Okay, you can solve the final one also. So that will be giving me something similar to all the conditions. Okay, I'm not going for that one. You can just solve that one. So I can see like from this situation, y equal to zero that we are getting and x plus g that is coming out to be zero. So I hope there will be some option that is x equal to zero. No, that is incorrect. Y equal to zero, that is a possible case. Okay, so only this is a possible case. So b is the correct option. Okay, so again, a very straightforward problem. You just have to look on the eigenvector, sorry, eigenvalue. Okay, so let's go to the final problem for today's discussion. Okay. Okay, so that is problem number five that I can see. 
so we are given some x1 x2 and so on a sequence of id random variables that is having some uniform 0 comma 1 okay let y be a random variable having the same distribution function g having the distribution function g suppose that limit and tending to infinity p x1 plus x2 plus xn divided by 4 less than equal to x that is coming out to be gx so you can see like one observation that i can see is like this is something that is given to be y because technically the y less than some value x that is given to be gx and we know this gx is nothing that is the distribution function for g that's the thing that we know okay then it says like calculate the variance of y so if i go for calculating the variance of y so that will be nothing variance of my x1 plus x2 plus xn divided by 4 you can take the limit also like limit on this xn so if i go for limit and tending to infinity that doesn't make any much difference in this scenario because we are having this ird sequence so technically i'm going to use this in this format that okay limit and tending to infinity that will be nothing one by four variance of x1 plus variance of x2 plus variance of x3 or oh, sorry xn now whether it is x1 x2 xn or anything that will be similar to variance of x so i can write one by four three times variance of x that's the thing so that will be coming out to be sorry one by four square four square four square so that will be three divided by 16 into one by 12 okay so i can just make one and that will be equal to four and that will be one by 64 so I think that will be the answer. So let's have a look on the options. So we are getting the option B as the correct option. Okay, so these are like our initial five problems that I discussed in today's session. So in the upcoming session or the days that I'm going to have a discussion on the rest problems. So I will try to solve all the problems like in maybe five to six days, but like I'm not bound to solve. So I will try to solve them on time, but there is a possibility that I'm stuck in some work. So I will try to solve them in the coming one week, most probably. Okay, so if anybody find any doubt in the any detail that I gave in this particular video, any solution that I provided, let me know in the comments or at my Gmail ID. Okay, apart from that, I'm starting some live session. So if you want to be a part of the live session in which I'm going to discuss few problems, few concepts on some regular basis, maybe on alternate days or maybe three days a week, something like that. So I will just plan that thing accordingly. So if you want to be part of that session, just fill out the form that is put on in the description box. So that's all for today's session. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.